Welcome back to a wretched kidney punch, courtesy of uh, the Apostle James and Phil Johnson. There, there really should be a comma there because Phil is not an apostle. Welcome back to wretched James chapter 4, 4. Hoofda, is it a kidney punch? And it tags you and it tags me. This is a sin that is so infrequently discussed in the church. And according to Phil Johnson, who preached on this text, he believes that this is perhaps the grossest sin, the most pervasive sin in the Western church today, the sin of worldliness. And if you think James hits hard, hoo -hoo. listen to Phil Johnson define what worldliness looks like, starting with <clears throat> many pastors. There are Christians, including some Christian leaders, who I would say are sinfully obsessed with the whims and entertainments of this world. Chasing the latest fad is their favorite pastime, and they seem to think we can harness uh, worldly uh, likes and dislikes, and we can harness those things as an evangelistic strategy. And so they work hard to adopt all the badges of worldly style and the key elements of worldly wisdom. You know, they in immerse themselves in worldly entertainments. They crave popularity and worldly approval. They may try to convince you even that a, a neck tattoo of a Bible verse or, or a religious symbol is, is really more effective than a real testimony. You should get your neck tattooed. That's a great testimony. That is the lowbrow form of evangelical worldliness. Mm. Now, with that thought in mind from Phil Johnson, considering the attitude of James when he calls us adulterers and adulteresses for being worldly, what should be our attitude toward those pastors who are incorporating the world and bringing it, opening up the floodgates right into the church? Frankly, we should be shocked. We should be aghast at this. This really shouldn't be something that's like, well, you know, different strokes for different folks. That's kind of the way that they want to. And make no mistake about it, there's liberty in such things. But if those things are worldly, and we are incorporating them into church proper, the church worship service, in an effort to make the gospel palatable to pagans, James goes, you're an adulterer. You're an adulteress. Don't you know that's war with God? Hold on. Just in case you were cheering that, my dear conservative friend, and thinking, yeah, 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 have at those liberal, squishy, neck tattoo, skinny jean wearing pastors. Hold the phone, Henrietta. May I ask you a question? Are you somebody who loves to study theology? Anybody else? Anybody else? Careful. That too can be worldly. There is a highbrow flavor as well, and those are the evangelical elitists who are driven by an unhealthy craving for academic renown. They become desperate, so desperate to, to win scholarly approval and street cred among the academics that they end up apostatizing in the process. Knowledge puffs up, and if we're not careful, we can be pursuers of theological knowledge, which is not Jewish wisdom, theological knowledge, and that too can be worldly. You say, wait a second, studying about God can be worldly if all it is is an exercise in being smarter than other people, or you judge your heart, I judge mine, simply being writer, looking smarter than other people, then indeed we're worldly. Consider the professor, the tenured prof at a typical university with the elbow patch and the pipe and looking all smart and smug. That's what James is after. Yes, we study the Bible, but it is so that we can apply it, so that our hearts can be warmed by the knowledge this is what God is like. This is what I'm like. And this is what Jesus did because of those two knowledges. God is high and holy. I am a sinful disaster at war with God. And Jesus Christ reconciled me to the Father. 
Let me tell you about the implications to this theology as we study supralapsarianism versus infralapsarianism. And infralapsarianism. <laughs> I get my lapsarianisms goofed up because I don't want to be an intellectual like that. I don't want to be the guy who is just pontificating and bloviating. If theological knowledge does not transform the learner, it's really simple. You're doing it wrong because you're being worldly. Hold on. Phil Johnson isn't done tagging all of us yet. And closely related to that brand of worldliness is the current evangelical preoccupation with celebrity status, a yearning for fame and popularity, a craving to be noticed by other people, like the Pharisees of whom Jesus said they do all their deeds to be seen by others. Only unlike the Pharisees, today's evangelical fame seekers don't necessarily even try to make any show of public piety. They're just hungry for the world's applause. And the world today is not typically impressed by religion. And so people do other things to be noticed by the world. And they think they're doing Christ a favor by calling attention to themselves because they're Christians. Ouch. Worldliness is insidious. It can raise its head in so many different forms. Is it possible that perhaps you and I have been overlooking forms of worldliness in our lives? You say, no siree, Bob, you haven't tagged me yet. I'm not a neck tattooed pastor. I'm not one of those intellectual elites. I'm not one of those people who goes, oh, look, somebody who was an extra from a Blossom episode in 1993, made a profession of faith. whoop de doo You haven't tagged me on worldliness yet. Hold on. Are you sure? And then there are those who seem to think that we can save the world if we could just win enough elections. They throw themselves into politics and, and learn the art of compromise, and then they barter away their convictions or their testimony in exchange for some political advantage. Perhaps nothing is more worldly than the idea that Caesar's authority might be harnessed by the church and put to good use. Very few Christians are able to devote themselves to politics and, and maintain an uncompromising commitment to Christ. Because after all, the most pressing priority for any politician is to win votes in the next election. And, and so worldliness thrives among evangelicals who are sold out political activists because they want the world's votes, if not their approval. Only because it's necessary. Phil Johnson is not saying don't vote. Phil Johnson is not saying you can't be involved in politics. That's not his point. He is on James 4, 4, you adulterer and adulteresses. Love of the world system, enmity with God, taking politics, investing in it, bringing the church into it, or politics into the church because we think that's what's needed to make everything better. It's to be at enmity with God. Got conflict in your life? Of course you do because you live with sinners. We have a resource just for you. Conflict. It's all about biblical reconciliation. It is profoundly helpful, and you can find it at wretched.org.